Alright, let's take a look at the Motorola Atrix 4G's software. Um, it's running Moto Blur over Android 2.2.1. Um, as you can see, it's got the kind of cartoony blue and green um, buttons down here for contacts and calling, as well as the app drawer button. Um, overall, it doesn't look terrible. The widgets are not the best looking in the world. They're all kind of square. Uh, it is kind of nice that you can resize the widgets. See how I can just resize it. But um, overall they look kind of weird. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the design of those. Uh, one thing that's interesting on the Atrix 4G is that um, Motorola decided, oh well since this is a high res device we should probably make the home screen uh, size it down to 800 by 480 so that's exactly what they did they sized down the home screen so that uh, widgets actually look smaller than they really can be um, I've noticed when you replace the launcher though um, the widgets usually just stretch perfectly and they look fine so they don't really need to uh, have this as you can see there's kind of like a square of space around everything they don't need to have as much of a margin uh, on the sides. Uh, when you drag a widget, this kind of white screen pops up over here, this white wall that you kind of bump into to move it to a new screen. And um, that would be okay if it was a little less ugly. I guess, uh, I, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of that, but uh, that's personal opinion. Um, so Motorola's added uh, some toggle widgets for your power supply, basically. Uh, calendar, date and time, messages, news, photos, social networking, sticky notes, and weather. Um, I do like this uh, little, uh, it's kind of a copy of HTC Sense's Leap feature, although uh, you can't actually get there by doing pinch on the uh, home screen, which is a little odd. Uh, I was a little uh, weirded out by the fact that Motorola doesn't have a uh, an on-screen home button over the app drawer like the default launcher. So I, that's kind of a uh, kind of bothered me at first. But I mean, there is the home button right below, so that's not a huge deal. Uh, overall, the most annoying thing about the home screens has to be this little. Uh, guide down here that uh, is supposed to uh, help you navigate between your your uh, your home screens but um, it actually ends up getting in your way because it won't disappear for a long time and then you're prohibited from getting into your app drawer for like two seconds that can be annoying when you're trying to do something quickly on the phone um, up top you've got your basic notifications bar instead of having AT&T down here on the notifications bar they actually just put a permanent AT&T to the left side of the bar which is a little annoying because I mean we know we're on AT&T I mean everyone knows that they've signed up for their AT&T contract it's, we don't need to be reminded of it daily but um, but overall it's not a big deal um, applications are mostly all right. Uh, I liked their implementation of the camera. You can see it's got a nice menu here when you tap on the screen and a nice quick button to switch to the front facing camera. Um, overall I was a little disappointed that they would replace the Android 2.2 gallery with this gallery because it's definitely not near as nice as the default stock gallery that comes with Android 2.2 Froyo. Um, but that's that's excusable. Uh, overall, Motorola Blur isn't the best uh, implementation of an Android skin we've seen. It's not as polished as Samsung's TouchWiz, and it's not as polished as HTC Sense either, but um, it's also not terrible. The dialer is pretty nice. It allows you to type in 
uh, various things like that. To um, it allows you to type in numbers and find contacts quickly, uh, which is nice. But um, overall, functionality with Blur is not really added, and the design is pretty lacking in my opinion. So that's it for the software.